Welcome back to Radioactive Sponge. One of the ways of representing how much stuff you have in a mixture of things is percentage composition. You can see this all the time on food packaging because it doesn't make sense to quantify the amount of tomatoes by their number when you have a tin of tomatoes, especially when you only have a 400 gram sample. Same goes for this tin of beans. In this case, they provide further details about the percent composition of the rest of the ingredients. Calculating these percentages is really quite easy, but to make things fun, I've decided to pick a really fat hippopotamus. How much percent is the head of a hippopotamus responsible for the hippo's overall mass if the hippo's head weighs 900 kilos and the whole body weighs 3,000 kilos? But, Mr. Bowman, you might say, that's really easy. Why don't you just divide 900 kilos by 3,000 kilos? Ah, don't forget to multiply your answer by 100 to make sure that you are in the unit of percent. Now that you get the idea, let's apply this to a chemistry example. What is the percentage composition of potassium in potassium dichromate? To do this calculation, we need to figure out the mass of the potassium dichromate as well as the mass of the potassium in that molecule. Once we know these two values, we can then just do the same substitution as we did before in the hippopotamus example, where we put them into the fraction and multiply it by 100. Notice here that I've calculated the total mass of potassium here in atomic mass units. And similarly, I've also calculated the molar mass of potassium dichromate in atomic mass units as well. This is all right because when we do our final calculation, the units will just cancel out, so it won't make a difference. This procedure might work well for most things. However, you may come across hydrated ionic compounds, where the water molecules have been incorporated into the crystal structure of the ionic compound. We write these chemical formulas with the water molecule just tacked onto the end, such in these examples here, where anhydrous copper sulfate, well, doesn't have any water in it, so it has none. We got copper sulfate trihydrate, which has three water molecules for every one molecule of copper sulfate. And we have copper sulfate pentahydrate and copper sulfate heptahydrate. In these cases here, you may have to calculate the mass percentage of the water, or you may have to take the water into account when expressing your composition. Let's return to our happy hippo, but this time we have an anhydrous hippo and a healthy one. When we do our calculations, we find that the percentage composition of its head is very different depending whether it's a hydrated or a dehydrated hippopotamus. Now a chemistry example. If I have 36 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate from my experiment, what is the percentage composition of the water in my sample? First we have to think about the question. Well, I've been given a mass, the molecule, and I'm asked for the percentage composition. Do I need to calculate the number of moles from the 36 grams to get a percentage composition? Well, no, we don't, because doesn't really matter how much grams you have, the percentage composition will always be the same. Now when doing these calculations you need to take in consideration we have five groups of these molecules. So we have to multiply whatever the relative atomic mass of each of those elements, multiply that result by five. Now we need to calculate the molecular mass of the five groups of water molecules. Thanks for watching. Here's a challenge question for you to try at home. And shortly I'll be showing you the directions for the last challenge question from last episode. If you have any comments or questions, please comment below. If you liked the video, hit like, and I'll see you again in another episode.